We're placing our 2x4 along the track where your roof rack would normally be supported. Then we're going to use the anchor points around the vehicle to tie everything down. We're going to start at one anchor point, wrap around our 2x4, run it through the opposite side, and then wrap it back before we go to the other corner. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now this allows us to get opposing tension so the 2x4 stays nice and solid. Finally, we're going to tension each corner. Here's the first anchor point. It's the rear shackle for your passenger door. Now the cord I'm using is both strong and thin, so it's not interfering with the operation of the door. The second anchor point is the middle hinge. And the forward anchor point is the front hinge of the door. Each anchor loop gets a smaller loop tight in the end to help form the hitch. As I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that you're at the strongest part of the roof. As we go farther in, you can see the roof is less supported. These towels account for the curve of the roof and they also protect the body. Now I just center my 2x4s on the towels. On this side I found the center point of my cord and I'm running it through the anchor with a simple lark's foot. I'm forming another lark's foot at each end of the 2x4s. Now what I want to avoid is any lateral movement within the cord, and so this configuration works well. And I'm still able to adjust it and pull the 2x4s back, so that when I tension everything, the 2x4s are centered on that rail. This is where I'll use an automatic trucker's hitch, also known as a black wall hitch. I'll run the cord through twice, and that allows me to lock in tension as I pull it in. Same thing on the other side, I've tied in my lark's foot, and now I'm just going to pull in my black wall hitch. This anchor point is going to mirror the other side, and I'm wrapping it around the 2x4s three times here. And like you've seen before, every corner gets the same hitch. To give everything its final tension, I'm going to use a marlin spike hitch. So you do an overhand loop, you do that overhand loop one more time, and then thread your marlin spike in and out. And now you have a slick little handle you can pull your tension in with. I'll go around and tension each corner until everything is properly secure. To finish it off, I'll grab a bite and I'll pull in two half hitches. But I don't want this dangly loop, so I'm gonna form in two half hitches and just throw them on top. And then with the free end, I'll open my door and just close it back. Same thing on this side. Now if you wanna be fancy and make a quick release, you're just gonna layer your two bites and you'll take a locking pin, thread it through, and close it. You can do the same with the ends, just pull in a bite on your standing end, take your free end and create another, and then thread your locking pin through. Now if you're not comfortable with this, don't do it. I've never met a police officer that accepted, I saw it on YouTube as a defense. Now I'm on my way to Lowe's Home Improvement Store. This is an 8 foot 2x4 that's on top of my car. I'm going to return it and I need to pick up a 10 foot 2x4. And if you're interested in the real time footage of me tying down the 10 foot 2x4, then you can stay for the second part of this video. But in the meantime, here are some tips to help you get this tied. I started each anchor loop with about one fathom of cord, which is the distance between outstretched hands. And then I formed my loop by simply tying in an overhand knot. Now you want to be careful, this knot is fairly stable, but with repeated use, it can slip. So you want to make sure you either do a double fisherman's or you just reinforce it with another overhand knot. You don't want this knot interfering with your anchor point. So when I go to form my lark's foot, I'm going to center it in my loop, and then I'll go ahead and I'll do my lark's foot. Now at the other end, to help stabilize our black wall hitch, or what I call the automatic trucker's hitch, we're going to tie in an overhand knot and form just a little loop. For each anchor point, you saw me go through the loop and then go through the loop one more time. Now because of the way I coiled it, 
as long as my turn is on the left hand side, I can pull in my tension and the rope is going to lock itself. If when you're doing this, it's looking all messed up and you're wondering what you're doing wrong, first thing you need to do is just isolate your loop in your anchor point, And then you need to isolate the turns that you did around that loop. Here I'm coiling from left to right, which means I need to push my loop to the left and it will lock in. If I go the opposite way, it'll still work. I just need to make sure that my turn ends up on the right hand side. See right here, if I leave it on the left, I'll pull and then nothing will happen because my free end isn't underneath my working end. But if I flip this to the other side, now I can pull and we have our locking action there. And I can pull in as much tension as I want and keep it along the way. And once I'm done, I'll just take my free end and I'll pull it the opposite direction. I'll spill the loop and I'll pull it out. Imagine this is our two by four. I'm using a Lark's foot to keep everything into place. Now, normally you would take a bite and pass it over or under, and then you would come back around, grab your strands and pull everything through. And you'd end up with your cinching action there. Now, since I'm only working with one strand at a time, I'm going to go over my two by four, then underneath. Once I have my free end, I'm gonna go back over the standing end, go back underneath, pull up my loop in the back, and then feed my free end through. And I end up with the same configuration. In this video, you saw me using 275 nylon tactical cord. This cord is like Paracord's little brother. Paracord has seven inner strands and the 275 has five, but you can see that the 275 strands are just a little bit thicker than the individual Paracord ones. Anyhow, if you're interested in picking up some of this cord and you'd like to support my videos, you can visit my shop at awesomeforsale.com. Thanks. All right, so I have my two towels here. I'm gonna put one in the back directly over this center line, this little black strip here. That's the strongest part of the car. I can put the other towel in the front here. Now I'm putting it so that the folds are facing forward so that the wind doesn't catch the free ends here. All right, here's my two by four, 10 feet long. I have it about its balancing point. And I'm just gonna place that right between the towels. Good. Here's one side. Just take my cord here and I'll find the center point. A lark's foot. There we go. And then I like to spill it back so that it looks like a, uh, a reef knot. Looks like we didn't get the center point there. There we go. I'll just leave this on top for now. We'll do the uh, outsides first. Okay, so here we're going to do a crow's foot. So I'm going to go around on this side and I'm going to go under here. I'll pull it back under, I'll pull up my loop and I'll go back through it again. And I'll show you how to do this on a smaller scale so that it's a little easier to understand. But I'll pull my large foot back so that I can, when I tension it up, it lands on that center strip. And then here on the bottom loop is where I'll start to tie it in. So I'll run it through once, I'll run it through twice. Now, if this thing looks all messed up when you're doing it, you just wanna make sure that you have your loop isolated and then your turns from your tensioning side. Since I did it from left to right, I'm gonna push my little coil here to the left and now it'll lock into an automatic trucker's hitch as I put tension on it. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go around. All right, here we go. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go around once. Then I'm gonna come over the top here. Make sure we're 
underneath and there we go and i'll pull it down here same thing i'll pull it back until i get the tension i want so that when i pull it tight it's directly over that supporting strip Here's my little loop for my front hinge. Here at Lowe's and at your home, projects okay. are underway. Now we have our outsides tied on our 2x4. I'm going to go towards the, uh, the middle so that we have the opposing force to help it keep it in place. And for this side, I'm just going to wrap it around three times. Okay, after this, we're going to go to the other side and we're going to tension down these ends on those hinges. All right, so here's our rear hinge, our loop. Gonna go through one time. Go through a second time to make it an automatic trucker's hitch. Isolate my loop and push my coil to the left. And now I can pull in the tension and keep all the tension that I put in. So go to this side here. Let me open the door real quick. once through the loop, go through again, since I did it left to right, push it to the left, and I'll pull in my tension. Alright, so now we need to go through and pull in more tension, so here I'm going to take my Marlin spike, I'm going to wrap it, and then thread it through, again I'll show you how to do this, but now I'm going to add in my tension here. There we go, there's once. Let's add the tension on this side. Now we'll tension on the other side over here. So we did our initial light tension and now we're doing our main tensioning. There we go. All right, let's check our Two by four, feels a little bit wobbly, so I want to add more tension. So I'm just gonna adjust it from here. Let's pull in our tension. There we go, you see all that slack we just got out? Getting better. feel secure. Now I need to tie off all my free ends here. So you're if you want to come close. I'm going to tie a bite and then I'm going to tie a bite and I'm going to do two half hitches with that bite. There's once, there's twice. Pull everything tight. There we go. Now I have this loop here. I'm just going to take my cord once, twice, and then grab onto my loop. There we go. That way my loop is not dangling all over the place. Now with this end, I'm just gonna open my door and throw it in. All right, 
Now you saw when I opened the door, it popped in some, uh, some slack. Well, I want to take that back. So I'm just going to take out my half hitches and I'll pull that tension back in real quick. Now, if you don't want to open your doors, after you pull in your two half hitches, you can secure your loop. And then I'm just going to take this up around the back and I'll just tuck it underneath the two by four. You just want to make sure that you get uh, some good purchase under there. Now, if you want, you could also just take it and tie it to your line here. So here, I'm going to do that alternative method instead of opening the door. I got this tied up, and here I'm going to do a barrel knot. There we go. And this I can just slide across. And I don't have to open my door if I don't want to. Alright, last one. I know it's difficult to, uh, to film someone tying knots when they're not doing the whole tutorial, but this is just the real life application. Now you can see your tie downs. If you take a peek, you can see it in that corner there. And then you can also see them in the back corners in case something comes loose. And if you have a sunroof, oh sun, then uh, you can see them too.